A new study found that red meat derived from pasture-raised grass-fed animals has two times as much phytochemicals and other health-promoting metabolites compared to feedlot animals. Let's break down one of the most complex and comprehensive studies of its kind titled Pasture Finishing of Bison Improves Animal Metabolic Health and Potential Health-Promoting Compounds in Meat. This was published in the year 2023 in the Journal of Animal Sciences and Biotechnology. As you can see here on the screen, figure four looks at the various phytochemical metabolites found in red meat from pasture-raised bison, comparing that to pen-raised or feedlot bison. And on average, there was 2.3-fold higher amounts of phytochemicals in the pasture-raised red meat compared to the feedlot bison. I think this is really important to unpack because for a long time, we have relegated red meat to just focusing on the protein and possibly the fat compounds, you know, the saturated fat, the cholesterol, and possibly the carnonutrients, creatine, carnitine, taurine, etc. But it turns out that there are phytochemicals in pasture-raised red meat that you're not getting from feedlot or pen-grown uh, animals. And I think this really speaks to the idea that pasture-raised, regeneratively raised livestock is not only healthier for the planet, we know that pasture-raised cattle can sequester carbon back into the soil. Uh, and they are off, uh, also the, the manure is rich in compounds that are great for growing agriculture, growing vegetables and fruits and things like that. But not only that, but the, the meat is actually more nutritious uh, from a health standpoint for the consumers, the humans, I think that are eating this, I think this is really important. We don't, when we think about phytochemicals, we think of things like blueberries, we think of curcumin, we think of green tea, we think of uh, ginger extract uh, and broccoli and so forth. But we don't really think that red meat can be a source of phytochemicals, but it turns out that due to extensive metabolic profiling that was conducted in this study, there were 1500 unique compounds that were differentially expressed in the red meat, in the bison that was raised via via pasture, via you know regeneratively raised agricultural techniques, compared to the pen raised bison, I think this is really important for us to consider. And you, as a consumer, when you're deciding what foods do I eat, do I just go for the feedlot beef, you know, versus the pasture raised grass fed uh, beef and so forth, and also. Uh, understanding that red meat can be a source of phytonutrients that are actually have health promoting properties. These phytochemicals we know have uh, hormetic stre stressor effects on the body. They can affect mitochondrial function. They can differentially uh, impact the release of brain derived neurotrophic factor in the brain. There's a lot of uh, health promote, promoting properties that are ascribed to these phytochemicals that are not just relegated to plant foods. It turns out that red meat can be a source of phytochemicals. This is I think new to a lot of people, uh, myself included. Over the last year, I didn't I didn't know this. I wasn't aware of these of these different studies. And now more and more studies are finding that red meat is not just a source of protein, not just a source of these conditionally essential carnonutrients, creatine, carnitine, taurine. There's uh, all sorts of of carnonutrients, even things like methyl B12 and zinc, and higher amounts of uh, essential amino acids like leucine and methionine and beyond. But now we have these, this phytonutrient category that we're understanding is higher in pasture-raised animals. So uh, I want to further dive into this study, but just pause and appreciate and thank you for watching all the way through. Hopefully you're enjoying this content. If you do, please hit that like button and leave me a comment in the comment section below. Also, I want to thank this video show sponsor, BondCharge.com, the makers of a range of health-promoting tools. Now, because you're probably going to be traveling this winter, I strongly suggest you check out their blackout sleep mask. I use this everywhere. I was just traveling last week. It's a phenomenal mask, but because it's winter time and we know that sauna therapy is really important for helping you unwind from the seasonal stressors, from traveling. We have Thanksgiving coming up. We have Christmas. We have family engagements that can be very stressful. If you would like to unwind naturally at night, I strongly suggest you consider the infrared sauna blanket by Bond Charge. What makes this unique is it's one of the hottest on the market, getting up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's also one of the lowest in terms of non-native EMF as well. So if you're traveling this holiday season, don't worry. You can bring the Bond Charge Sauna Blanket with you. 
value. It's a very small form factor. So if you live in a studio, a flat, a condo, an apartment, you can just roll it out just like you would roll out a yoga mat and get in there and do your 10 to 15 minutes of heat therapy. Remember, thermal stress is a great way to help to calm down your nervous system, help you relax in the evening time and foster deep restorative sleep while also excreting harmful persistent organic pollutants, plastics, and heavy metals. So you can save on this amazing tool by going to bondcharge.com forward slash HIH or click the link in the description below. It's an awesome tool. I hope you use it this winter. So getting back to the study, the investigators say, our study represents one of the deepest meat profiling studies to date. More than 1,500 unique compounds were differentially expressed in the pasture-raised animals compared to the feedlot and or pen-raised animals, having revealed previously unrecognized differences in animal metabolic health and nutritional composition because of finishing mode. Whether observed nutritional deficiencies have appreciable effects on human health remains to be determined. But what they found is that uh, from fatty acid levels to various polyphenol compounds, vitamin A, alpha tocopherol, 5.8 fold greater differences in beta carotene. There was a two fold greater difference in that, a 1.3 fold greater increase in long chain fatty acids such as EPA and DHA uh, and beyond. So I think it's really important to understand that we should be voting with our dollars. So if you want to support the health of the environment and you also want to support the health of your body and you're going to decide what protein source should I be you know, choosing here? Should I get the boneless, skinless chicken at Costco or the grass-fed uh, ribeye or the grass-fed ground beef? I, I really don't see a lot of studies on regeneratively raised chicken because chickens like to fly. They like to get out. And so that's why most chicken growers, even if they're quote unquote organic, sadly, the chicken is still raised in a on concrete, in a warehouse. You're not going to be getting the, the differences in the flesh that you would be getting when you compare a pasture raised bison or cattle compared to a feedlot bison or, or a cow. So vote with your dollar. Start to support ranchers and farmers that are participating in the solutions that are going to be best for the environment and human health. And that is regenerative agriculture, uh, focusing on grass-fed beef uh, and you know grass-fed goat and, and things like that. Uh, we know these ruminant animals uh, have much higher concentrations of essential amino acids, fatty acids, phytochemicals compared to their you know, feedlot uh, alternatives, and especially compared to poultry. Uh, as much as I love chickens, I have 17 of them in my backyard. Uh, they are for eggs and they're for their uh, chicken manure that are spread on, on the trees and bushes and things like that. But we eat mostly ruminants in terms of uh, primary protein source. And, and we've talked about the reasons why that may be. But I think this study is really interesting. I hope, hopefully you got some value from this and enjoyed the figures and facts. I'm going to look at the reference materials and make more videos on this because this is a really interesting uh, point of view. Uh, and it turns out that the meat that you eat and how it was raised, uh, ha it has a totally different nutritional profile and, and therefore probably affects the he your health and health trajectory. Uh, so I think we should be voting with our dollars. And even though it might be a little bit more expensive to get pasture raised or organic, it's probably gonna be better for your health. So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for hitting that, hitting that like button and watching all the way through. We'll catch you on a future one down the road.